Okay, so we start the recording. Recording. Everyone, once again, thank you very much for joining us today in this December edition. I hope you're having a fantastic week. And today is an exception, it's Thursday, so we're close to the weekend. And be aware that this is our last meetup for year 2021, which means we are already made the anniversary of more than two years of hosting these events. I'm really proud to, to say it. I have enjoyed the enthusiasm of our community. So I wanted to thank you all for making these events as delightful as they have been. With that, we're going to start with our first five minutes of announcements and update. And today we're going to be featuring Anu, and she will be taking us to the Muse of Composer session. With that said, remember who we are. We have Manik and Sandeep leading the meetup from Americas. We have Royston in the Singapore headquarters leading the ones in APAC. And you have myself, Angel Richie, in EMEA. And yes, you can read our Easter egg there for today. The choice is yours. For anyone that is a fan of the Matrix Saga movies, there is the second, 22nd December, a great announcement of what is coming next. Moving on, we have exciting announcements and updates for today. The first one is going to be this six minutes video that you can share with anyone that is starting in Milsoft. It's a recap of all the resources that people can use to automatically do, do self-help for, for their knowledge, for their learning experience. You will have there as well the link to the virtual Mulis playlist. So you will get this video plus the 65 that we in customer success, I creating every time our customer come with issues with concerns to us we release these videos to help you very short videos we tackle one specific topic each time and the main objective is to help you to avoid the pain without said there's another one rtf troubleshooting inbound traffic this is a new asset in Catalyst that you can leverage if you're having any issues with your inbound traffic. It's already published and it will help you. There is an excitement, uh, exciting update that is on the December roadmap, 14 and 15 December. We will have this product webinar where you will hear about the Mulesoft product vision and you're also able to ask questions directly into the Mulesoft product team. You can raise your concerns. You can also hear about what is coming next in Mulesoft. So you can register now. Quick reminder, we have this session a couple of weeks ago, any point platform sustainability scenario and the Mulesoft DevOps tools. We talk about the any point provider, which is related with a Terraform template. You don't need to know Terraform to use this one to leverage it. There's also the REST Google spreadsheet in the case that you want to work with the Mulesoft platform from a spreadsheet, making REST calls underneath. And finally, the Mulesoft Postman collection. That is a, an open source initiative that we have delivered to you. Recording available Tuesday and Thursday today, where the days of the Mulesoft transfer, a new exciting event, but more importantly, you will have those on-demand resources. But today I wanted to highlight something that many of my customers ask me. Any point for service mesh was released a couple of years ago, if you remember. There is there in the screen, we have to think about the any point platform, this platform to rule them all, one platform to rule them all. And what is happening with any point service mesh is that the use case is very specific. We need to think about you using a Kubernetes cluster already, having that Kubernetes expertise, that those practices in-house, also installing in your cluster Istio, and on top of that, installing the Mule adapter. All of this to control the non-Mule APIs. This was cumbersome, and it didn't apply to, to all 
of uh, customers use cases. It was limited to the customers that were already using Kubernetes. What was announced this week is the universal API management with MuleSoft. In the left, you see the applications hosted whether in CloudHub, Runtime Fabric, on-prem, standalone. And in the right, now you can think not only about Kubernetes, but you can think about your microservices, your distributed APIs, dedicated gateways, anything that is hosted in AWS, Azure, GCP, Docker, maybe containerized Kubernetes, on-prem hosting, and etc. So now we're thinking and covering more use cases, the use cases that my customers were asking, for example. And if we dive deep into any point flex gateway, we're talking about next generation lightweight gateway for distributed APIs and microservices. Four main topics here is a small footprint, it's flexible on where you install it and how you use it. And we're adding easily discoverable. It manages, it protects, and serves as a standalone proxy for any API, including the non-mule APIs. Finally, there's three points there that are being aimed towards is to support REST APIs, HTTP 1.1 protocol, and the HTTP 2 protocol that we have heard from some specific customers. In the screen, you can see an example of how the documentation will look like. You will be able to install and run as a Linux service, install and run as using Kubernetes, and install and run as using Docker. Another point that is relevant for you is that it's being planned for general announcement on the next half, next year's half. So from February to July plus, it will be announced. What we call the Flex Gateway is, as we mentioned, built for developers, two main advantages, to manage locally with a declarative configuration file, and very different from before, deploy anywhere with the support for cloud instances, containers, orchestration, Kubernetes, and bare metal. Another important release or planned release for the first half of next year is this CI-CD plugin, which basically, as you can see in the screen, will automatically discover APIs in any environment. So you install this plugin into your CI-CD tooling, and it will automatically extract the metadata and documentation and publish it to Exchange. So that way it's less work for you, less work with APIs is going to be wrapped and you can use it and leverage. Finally, we know that the holiday season is coming in and we need to think about support. When we think about outages, Christmas is a period where it is crucial. There are many people that are on holidays and there's less people working on those issues if anything was to happen. Very important, please take some time to review the of recommended support process. If you haven't seen it before, it's vital for you to know. Here it covers best practices, guidelines on how to troubleshoot. It's clear recommendations on how to work with support cases, how to create them, how to collect the data that you need, and also the most common troubleshooting techniques for each product. And most common errors that you can have and how to solve them. I will give the stage to you and you should be able to start sharing your screen now. How's that? That's perfect. Cool. Let me know when the recording has started. Yeah, the recording has started. So Anna, once again, the four times that you're presenting to the community. And with that, we're going to give it up. Great. So today I'd like to cover an introduction to MuleSoft Composer. Uh, before we start, just a reminder, as always, we are excited to share the latest MuleSoft innovations with you, which means we may talk about future looking products and services. Because future looking statements are inherently subject to risk and uncertainty, 
Please be reminded that you should make any purchasing or investment decisions based only on the products that are currently commercially available. Just a reminder. Now the good stuff. <clears throat> now more than ever, business teams are demanding more integrations and IT teams need to deliver at a faster pace to meet the needs of business. The number of requests is not only increasing, but it's also increasing across all parts of the business from marketing to HR to sales. In a recent connectivity report, 94% of IT leaders indicated the need for integrations that they can leverage across all lines of their business. So when we talk about the IT delivery gap and the inability of IT to deliver on the needs of the business, we're highlighting the need to enable those same business users to, to directly address their own needs. Organizations that figure out how to leverage the creativity of all of their highly educated workers and will dramatically outcompete their competitors. Of course, enabling less technical users to innovate is easier said than done. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> uh, business teams simply expect apps to connect. They need data from one application to inform another application without having to rely on IT or learn an entirely new platform. Let's take a few examples. A salesperson may need to check inventory in NetSuite for orders created in Salesforce, as well as track all of this data in Tableau. Or support wants to automate JIRA ticket creation when an issue is logged into Zendesk and also be notified in Slack at the same time. Or HR would like to automate and provision the right resources when a new employee is onboarded in Workday and by integrating to Google Sheets and Slack. Uh, I see that someone can't hear me. Can everyone else hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Anna. Okay. Don't worry, I will right. reply. Um, marketing wants to serve, uh, the last example, marketing wants to surface Salesforce pipeline and conversion data in Tableau, and also alert the team via Slack when it's available. But imagine having IT have to deliver on all of this, as well as all of the things that they already have to do. That's the problem. 80% of business users believe if IT capabilities were discoverable and available in prepackaged building blocks, business teams could create solutions and deliver digital projects more quickly. Everyone is becoming technical now. While 62% of IT users believe that security and compliance is the most immediate consideration when it comes to suggesting and building digital services. How can we merge these two visions into one product? Mealsoft has IT and line of business covered, from writing code to point and click to automated integration processes. We make it possible to integrate data from any system faster and more efficiently. Then we govern, secure, monitor, and manage all of your integrations and APIs, whether they're built in or out of Mealsoft and in one place. And we now make it possible for IT and line of business to unlock and use data to deliver innovation. As an IT organization, you can unleash the full potential of MealSoft with our made for IT product, AnyPoint platform. It lets IT work better and faster while innovating with the line of business. And now line of business can securely integrate systems, unlock data and create connected experiences faster with no coding required and automation built in for any business user, all while IT maintains security and control. Composer is the fastest and easiest way to connect your apps and data for anyone, anywhere. By working together, IT and business can innovate faster through collaboration. IT teams can focus on the production of reusable assets using AnyPoint platform, and business teams can focus on the consumption of those assets using Composer. This enables you to provide access to IT governed systems, crowdsource innovation, and prevent outages and vulnerabilities. For example, IT's teams can focus on production, curating an API catalog for business teams to use, or approving and identifying opportunities to refactor integrations and APIs at scale and ensuring resilience of the entire infrastructure, even the integrations built by business teams. Business teams can focus on consumption, using self-service capabilities to take advantage of inherently secure IT approved assets, creating integrations autonomously and easily testing for the correct functionality before going live. Introducing in order to do this, MealSoft Composer. Uh, 
VSLab Composer allows you to connect apps and data instantly with clicks, not code. No more waiting on IT. Take solutions from concept to reality with ease. Business teams can jumpstart their own integration projects to collaborate easily with IT. And scale integration securely and automatically. IT can monitor every integration effectively without slowing down the business. Let's take a look at an example. Inventory management. Connecting Salesforce to NetSuite to Tableau. We can reserve inventory in NetSuite automatically when an order is created in Salesforce and then update inventory data to reflect in Tableau. Here, we can see the flow of how IT and business can collaborate using the AnyPoint platform and Composer. IT provides business users access to Composer and controls which connectors and templates are exposed. The business can log into Composer and see what's available, then create their integration flows. These flows are then approved by IT. After approval, the applications built by the business go live and are all able to be monitored by IT. There are so many business cases that can be facilitated by using Composer. It can be used to streamline your sales operations, enhance employee experience, foster team collaboration, and streamline service and support. There have been two Composer releases, MuleSoft Composer for Salesforce, which is available as an application inside of your Salesforce instance, and MuleSoft Composer, which is a standalone application with its own entry point. Both are available now. Composer is a national, natural part of MuleSoft's journey to enable every user to draw on the power of composable enterprise. As we roll out Composer, we are effectively expanding the users we can support by providing purpose-built user experiences in the right UI for those users. We're also addressing specific use cases those users have by providing them with business capabilities and assets they need to get their job done. We don't expose all of the connectivity and functionality of any point platform into Composer since the line of business meet users need tailored, simple connectivity that addresses their use cases specifically in order to be successful. All of this comes naturally because Composer is built on top of the AnyPoint platform and can take advantage of connectivity, access control, asset management, and monitoring services from the underlying platform. The end result is a full end-to-end -end Composer product that delivers value in to line of business users. This addresses specific users and use cases. It can also be used in concert with AnyPoint, which delivers massive value to IT. They are able to be used independently, but together they're amazing. And that's what Composer with AnyPoint is all about. IT will be able to provide building blocks that Composer uses, users can safely leverage while giving IT control, governance, and monitoring over Composer integrations. And this isn't all built entirely separately from AnyPoint, it's built on the same foundation, so the customers can start with Composer and grow into any point seamlessly if they need to. We also want to share a quick update with you on the connectors available now and rolling out monthly. As of now, the team has made great progress with our Salesforce and NetSuite connectors, in addition to Stripe, Workday, Tableau, Slack, and the list keeps growing. Every month we have new connectors for Composer, so keep an eye out. And now I want to share with you a quick demo which will be a video, but I want to go through the business case first before I show you the video. So the business case is, let's say your marketing team manages and maintains leads collected from marketing events using a marketing lead spreadsheet and Google Sheets. Every time the team adds a new lead to the spreadsheet, you must also find out if the corresponding lead already exists in Salesforce. If it doesn't, they create it. Then they notify the sales leads channel about the lead in Slack. Currently, the marketing team performs these tasks manually. Every time there's a new lead, the team adds the lead to the spreadsheet in Google Sheets, and then they check if that lead exists in Salesforce, and if it doesn't, then they create it. This is all manual. And finally, they manually log into Slack and send a message to the, to the sales leads channel in Slack. This process is obviously time consuming, highly error prone, and it would benefit the team to automate it. So we're going to try to automate this flow using three connectors. 
The Google Sheets connector will synchronize data and automate business processes between Google Sheets and third-party applications. The Salesforce connector enables you to create applications that react to Salesforce events, such as adding, changing, or deleting objects, topics, documents, and channels. And the Slack connector gives you access to the Slack platform. This connector exposes all of the operations provided by the Slack API. So I'm just going to change my sharing. Yes, Follow we can see the screen. Launch MailSoft Composer and log in using your username and password. Click Create New Flow. Click the pencil icon next to the default flow name and name the flow Lead Nurturing Dash Sync Leads and click Save. Next, create the trigger for the flow using the Marketing Lead Spreadsheet by clicking Google Sheets and then Add New Google Sheets Connection. Name the connection and click Create. Select the Google account that owns the Marketing Lead Spreadsheet. Select all the permissions from MailSoft Composer to manage your Google Drive files and spreadsheets and then click Continue to grant MailSoft Composer access to your Google account. Configure the trigger to start a flow every time a new lead is added to the marketing lead spreadsheet. Click in choose an event that starts this flow field and select new row. In the spreadsheet field, select marketing leads. In the worksheet name field, select sheet one. Note that all the fields are returned by default. Click save to save the flow. Create the second step for the flow by clicking the plus icon and then Salesforce. This step will get the lead information from Salesforce. Name the connection and click create. If you're using a sandbox org, then click the checkbox. Log into Salesforce and click allow to grant MailSoft Composer the permissions to access your Salesforce information. Configure the next step to get all Salesforce leads that match the new lead from the marketing lead spreadsheet. First, click in the action field and select get records. In the object type field, enter lead. In the conditions to filter object pick list, select all conditions must be met and select first name as the field equals as the operator and first name from step one of the flow. Click Add Condition. Do the same step again for last name and email. Now, let's create and configure an if-else block to check if a lead with the same first name, last name, and email as the new lead in the marketing lead spreadsheet exists in, Salesforce, in the Salesforce org. Do this by clicking the plus icon and scrolling down to click if-else block. The all conditions must be met and condition is selected by default. Select a list of lead from step two of the flow as the field and then select is empty as the operator. If this condition is met, it means no corresponding lead exists in the Salesforce org. So a new lead will be created in the Salesforce org in the next step. Create a third step for the flow to sync leads in Google Sheets with leads in Salesforce. Click the plus icon within the if block to add a step. Click Salesforce. Click the connection you previously created to connect to your Salesforce org. Click in the action field and select create record. In the object type field, enter lead. The last name and company fields automatically appear because they are required fields. Click add field, selecting first name, email, phone, country, industry, and lead source, and then click add.
Map the columns in the marketing lead spreadsheet captured in step one of the flow to their corresponding lead fields in Salesforce as shown. Create the fourth step to sync Google Sheets leads with Slack notifications. Click the plus icon within the if block to add a step. Click Slack and then click add new Slack connection. Name the connection and click create. Select NTO from the Slack workspace pick list. Click allow to grant MailSoft Composer the permissions to view content and information about your workspace, channels, and conversations and perform actions and channels and conversations in the NTO workspace. Configure the fourth step to notify the sales lead channel of new leads. Click in the action field and select post a message to channel. In the channel field name, click, in, click the search pick list, select pick from list, and then select sales leads. Click in the message field and then click in custom expression. You use this custom expression tool to configure a message that has both dynamic field values from the preceding step to the flow and set a text that you enter. Enter asterisk new lead colon asterisk. This makes use of Slack support of the markdown syntax to turn asterisk new lead colon asterisk into a bolded new lead in Slack. Insert a space to select first name from step one. Enter another space and select last name from step one. Enter a comma and select email from step one. Enter a comma again and select phone from step one. Click apply. Leave the bot name and bot icon URL blank. By default, MailSoft Composer uses the MailSoft platform Slack app to communicate with Slack. Okay, that is the end of the demo, but I have a few more slides. Don't leave yet. Don't worry, Anu. We're, we have a couple of questions as well that we will use uh, the time later. Okay, great. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is the uh, there are a number of resources available. So these slides obviously will be uh, available for you to download, but within them are these links. There's help documentation on docs.mealsoft.com. There are a number of mini courses available uh, on OpenLearn, which is on training.mealsoft.com, but also on Trailhead, if you're a Trailhead member. Uh, you can see the video I just showed you along with many other videos. Uh, and also help.mealsoft.com has a community forum dedicated to Composer as well. So you can take a look at those resources. Um, to investigate more. Are there any other questions? Okay, Anu. First of all, thank you very much for the session. We do have one question you already answered related to the FTP connector. So it seems it's not available yet. It's in the roadmap. Um, the other question was related to uh, one second. Oh, okay, it's here. Will this process be executed as a patch process or as an on-demand process? A question coming from Ram. So the process I showed you, the Google Sheets to Salesforce to uh, Slack, it is like a polling process. So it, it reads the marketing lead spreadsheet and waits for a new entry. And then based on that entry, it will, it will initiate. Okay. And Anu, there's another question coming from Does any trial environment or any sandbox where we can actually try to create our own flows and play with the mutes of Composer? Uh, I think that you would need to discuss with your AE. I don't know how to grant those out, unfortunately. Okay, so it will be a matter of reaching out to both the account executive and the customer success manager of the account. Yes. Excellent. Okay, we have another question coming from Rajesh. What is the behavior in case of an error happening? Are there any error handlers, the, any notifications? 
Uh, yeah, so there will be an error at the top of the, uh, the interface in the right hand corner. Um, similar to, you know, maybe any sort of interface where you're trying to do something, there'll, there'll be an error in the corner. Um, there aren't the way APIs create logs that aren't the same, but the interface will give you some feedback, uh, perhaps similar to, to Lightning would. Um, Which will have right, that are needed yeah, to. Yeah, to there's no copy. error handler per se, but while you're doing your testing, you can work out those errors. Okay, excellent. Oh, we have another question coming from Murali. Rahesh says, uh, thanks, by the way. There's Anytime. a couple of thanks for the questions. Uh, from Murali is coming the question on Salesforce integrations. Muse of Composer is the best option or Salesforce Composer? When we're thinking about Salesforce integration, which one is a good fit or base, or should we be basing it on use cases and the connectors that we require? So when we're talking about uh, yes. Salesforce So I think it would depend on your uh, use cases. So for example, some customers don't have Salesforce, so they would not use Salesforce, you know, Salesforce Composer for Salesforce. Uh, but if all of your work is based on Salesforce, then you may want to go with that. The connector set will be the same for both. So I think it really just depends on what you're trying to do and your current landscape. If I'm only a Muse of customer, I can use the Muse of Compose. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Uh, we don't have any other questions so far. I guess that means my presentation was extremely complete. <laughs> will, we will see the, the feedback survey and I think it will be very good. Aha. Oh, another one, one coming from uh, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, so this only, is for, I yeah, uh, go ahead, Angel, sorry, you can do that. Yeah, is it only for lightweight flows or should it work for millions of records per second? Uh, so this is for business users. Um, I would find it intriguing to find a business user that would move millions of records per second. Um, I would not recommend it for that. This should be for lightweight business use cases only. If you're doing something like millions of records per second, you should turn to any point platform and use the power of, of, of the platform to do that. And I know this one actually, because when we think about, we have Salesforce Composer, we have Mills of Composer, we also have Flow Designer. And I think you mentioned something very important there that Mills of Composer is aimed to our business users. Yes. So it's different roles when we think about Flow Designer, it's like a prototyping instead of using our Anypoint Studio. When we think about Composer, it could be our business users. And now something that I am wondering, uh, has a IT people, has developers, our advantage is that we could train our business users. So when it's a small use case, they could take care of it, right? That would exactly. be exactly. So instead of them having to wait months for it to be at the back of IT's backlog to do this small use case I just showed you, they can do it. The video was six minutes long, so they could do it in six minutes uh, and test it and get it out the door within a week. So instead of waiting on IT to develop it and go through a sprint and all of these things, they can go to market quite quickly. And that's the advantage of Composer. But for something like moving millions of records, you want IT to performance test that. You want IT to make sure that it's not going to take down any systems. So. Yeah, and I like approach or mental model here that is like C4E, right? Center for enablement, so we can act being developers in IT, we can act to, to teach our business users how to use the simple parts of the platform with the Compose. Okay, understood. And we have another question coming from Rahesh, and this one is a tricky one. Does it consume any vCourse uh, from the uh, subscription? No, no, but it has a separate licensing model, the details of which I would refer to your AE for, because I don't know those details but it is not part of the vCore assumption. Okay, understood. 
Okay, Anu, uh, community, do we have any other questions on feedback for, for Anu? Anything related to the Muse of Composers that you would like to know more? Uh, otherwise, we're going to finish this session. Uh, we're going to post a recording into YouTube. We're going to upload the slides as well. I will re-record the introduction so we can have the, the video at least. And Anu, thank you once again. It's the, I think it's the fourth time already that you do one of these sessions for the community. I really appreciate you taking the step to, to come here. Yeah, of course. This is my steps to fame happening right here so. <laughs> fair enough the next uh, next step is product team yeah take yeah. take them <laughs> uh, okay everyone with that we're going to end up closing the recording now we're going to